Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to Watchbox and thanks for logging on. We're waking up with watches and everything is for sale. Reach out to me directly. I am T Masso at thewatchbox.com for all of your pricing questions. And I'll get you extra photos, details of boxed sets, anything you need. And if you want to sell a watch or trade a watch, we're always looking to build inventory. We pay fast, we pay cash, we make the process easy. We will buy your entire collection, no upper limit on value paid. To buy, trade, or sell, reach out to me, tmasso at thewatchbox.com. All right, getting started with the most versatile Rolex watch. When it first came out in 2012, the Rolex Sky Dweller was fascinating, but too expensive, poorly loomed, and an uncertain split between dress and sports watch design. Not a lot of folks were comfortable with the price or the minimally legible dial, especially in the dark, or the fact that initially that second 24-hour scale was a color that contrasted with the dial, giving it the look of a horse collar. Well, now, post-2017, everyone loves the Sky Dweller and Rolex can't keep them in stock because of this model. Mostly constructed of steel, it has only a white gold bezel, Jubilee bracelet available as of the last two years, also giving the watch something of a large Datejust look. The timepiece always looked like a large member of the Datejust family, and to complete the aesthetic, Rolex recently, as of the last two years, made the Jubilee bracelet available. So what we've got is 42 millimeters of mostly 904L steel, a bracelet to match, pop and open the clasp, you can see we have internally the Easy Link 5mm tool free adjustment system, snap in, snap out. The Jubilee bracelet is now so strong structurally, you don't feel like you need an oyster to protect the watch on your wrist. Plus, it vents a lot better than the Oyster with more gaps between links. The watch has a screw down crown, twin lock screw in case back, 100 meter water resistance. The bezel is part of the caliber 9001 movement. Quick notes, it's a chronometer, but it's certified beyond that. Rolex tests them to plus two, minus two seconds per day to be dubbed superlative chronometers. It's a roughly three day power reserve, automatic winding, 70 hour power reserve. It's an annual calendar, so you only need to adjust it once a year during the jump from February to March, and it is a true dual time with a 24-hour reference time zone. Now, I can wind the watch right here, but if I pull the crown out, nothing happens. I've got to turn the bezel, one click, counterclockwise. Now, remember what I told you about the annual calendar, little apertures outboard of each hour, 12 hours, 12 months. So what you're looking at right now is actually April 5th. You got the fourth month, you got the fifth of that month, and take a look at how I can drive that little red index forward or backwards. See it jumping right there between the third and the fourth? This is a bi-directionally settable annual calendar. Okay, that's cool and all, but I want to adjust my local hour. Well, to do that, I turn the bezel one more click, and now I can advance the date. I cannot drive it backwards, but I can advance the date. Note the watch is still ticking, and I'm not setting that 24-hour secondary zone. To do that, one more click counterclockwise. Now it activates hacking seconds. Now I have the ability to set everything in sync. So what you want to do is you want to set your reference time zone, which is the time zone at center. It's that 24-hour time zone. Make sure you get the minute right, and then one more click counterclockwise or clockwise, I should say. Now you set your local time, and then the last thing you do is you set your date however you please. Turn it all the way back, screw the crown in, you're good to go. In addition to Rolex's superlative chronometer standard, this is also certified as a Swiss chronometer with the COSC. Now remember, I said the earlier Sky Dwellers only had luminescent hands. Well, since 2017, we have fully luminescent dials. We also have a watch that wears surprisingly well for something so large. As a 42, it gets a bad rap as an oversized watch. It's not an oversized watch. It's a full-sized watch. It wears much more compact than something like a 42 millimeter Explorer 2. This is an easier watch to wear. I can wear it quite easily, and my wrist is just 16 centimeters in circumference. Now, a watch that, frankly, looks like it might be unwearable even for Shaq, turns out to be more wearable than the Sky Dweller. Taking a quick look, this is the second generation Ploprof 1200 meter. So the original Ploprof was designed with Comex in mind. That's a deep sea diving salvage and engineering company. Well, back in the early 70s, Rolex had that market cornered. Omega created the Plongeur Professionnel, or Seamaster 600, to compete for professional diving dollars, including those of Comex. Well, Comex didn't adopt the Ploprof, but the model design lived on as an icon of Omega's back catalog. Robust sales at the Omega Mania 
auction back in, I want to say, 2007, led Omega to believe that there was a market for a new Plo Prof in 2009 in steel with a date and a solid case back. The Plo Prof returned as the Seamaster 1200 meter. Well, for 2015, we got this watch, the second generation 1200 meter. Now it's all titanium. It has a ceramic rather than sapphire bezel insert. It has no date on the dial and it has a display case back. It is titanium and so is the bracelet. The watch has a quirky system adopted from the 1970s original. You press a pusher that allows you to turn the bezel in either direction. So when you release the pusher it's locked. There's also an extraordinary amount of luminescence and as you can see Omega has loomed the entire bezel and also calibrated the entire bezel. It's not common for a bezel to feature all 60 minutes radially. Usually you see that on older military style divers, but right here it's very easy to read your green minute hand against your green index. Those two things are green, everything else is blue, but you can see everything else that's going on on the dial. And note all three hands are loomed, so you know if the watch is running, even in the dark. A spectacular crown guard. We have two pillars that slide on internal rails that keep this perfectly aligned as it moves in and out. It feels incredibly robust. It also protects the crown against blunt impact which is not something you get with a standard shouldered crown guard like this. You can still hit the crown end on and do damage. You cannot do that with this setup. Now the watch, being a modern 8900 series Omega, has a system that allows you to move the hour hand independently of everything else. So as you travel, you have the ability to make changes without stopping your watch. Also important, whereas the original Ploprof 600 did not have a helium escape valve, this one does, and of course it is a 1200 meter diver. Taking a quick look at the buckle, it is remarkably robust. A large titanium single swing arm trigger released. We have a push button slider that gives you a lot more adjustable range than something like a standard Planet Ocean. A Planet Ocean will give you about 9.6 millimeters of incremental adjustment. This is closer to 20. And that's before we break out the fold-out dive extension, which you can see gives you almost two inches or 50 millimeters of extensible length. And then of course we've got the lovely Shark Hunter or Shark Proof Titanium Mesh Bracelet. Now the reason I say this watch wears better than the Sky Dweller is because it's only 48 millimeters lug to lug. People read the 55 millimeter rated size for this thing and they panic. But the truth is it's not a 55 in any regard except across the case, that is from 9 o'clock to 3 o'clock. Taking a quick look, you can see that it's long down the wrist, but it's not long across the wrist. That said, it is 18.4 millimeters thick, so it's every bit as thick as you think. Now, I'm going to throw it on my wrist, and you're going to see why I say this watch wears smaller. You can see how narrow it is across the wrist. It's an easy watch that's not encroaching on the edge of my wrist on either side. And over the top, you can see I've got a little bit of clearance on each side, so you could probably even pull this off on a 15 centimeter circumference wrist, but it is going to be a little bit cartoonish, being as big as it is, outrageous in shape and thickness and color. But make no mistake, in terms of ergonomics, especially given its ceramic, sapphire, and titanium construction, it's very light and very agreeable. I showed my hand a second ago, and I may as well elaborate. Back in 2022, Omega released this Seamaster Diver 300 meter James Bond 60th Anniversary Edition, celebrating 60 years of the cinematic James Bond, Dr. No, 1962. Here we have a watch that harks back to the Seamaster Diver 300 meter that made the model famous on the wrist of Pierce Brosnan during the 1990s. Of course, that original turn in GoldenEye was with the quartz model, but his next three turns came with the chronometer. This one has a dial that is actually made of aluminum and then textured and colored to look like the dial of that 1990s Brosnan model. It's not the ceramic laser etched dial that you see on the other Diver 300 meters as of 2022 and 23. Now we have a bezel that has 60 instead of a little luminescent pip, and that 60 is, yes, a nod to 60 years of James Bond. You'll also note that there's a little lollipop second sand, which is a nod to the way Seamasters were built back in 1962 when Dr. No bowed on screens around the world. You could see that, although it's not immediately apparent, this is actually a ceramic bezel insert. We have a luminescent 60. We have a full calibration all the way around. Again, a very military-like feature for a dive watch. And then the 
Bond-style skeleton hands, which have become iconic of this model, are present and correct with the green minute hand, easy to line up and distinguish from the reference point on the bezel. Now we have a full titanium bracelet strap, and I'm going to call it a bracelet strap because even though it's made of metal and it has links in it, it is still more like a strap. It's very flexible, very pliant. We have a deployant clasp here with a twin trigger release. You can see that it's super secure as internally, this is a new thing for Omega, there is a little hinged and ceramic pin snap secured lock. So once you put the opposite side of the strap into the clasp, it locks in place for super security. And this is why I call it a strap. It's got apertures as though it were a strap. So the watch wears very much like a diver on a strap, albeit a strap that will last for a lifetime. You can also see on the reverse of the case, a little bit of animation. We have the rifle motif that starts every James Bond film as some ever unnamed assassin attempts to take aim at Agent 007. It never works out well for that assassin. And then you can see we have the sort of phi effect as, as you see those lights that trace the agent and then eventually resolve to the rifle shot. Uh, that is duplicated around the reverse of the case. And of course, you can see the 00760th logo underneath, caliber 8806. That's the no date version of the 8800, automatic winding, anti magnetic, shock resistant, a master chronometer, a coaxial with a 55 hour power reserve and stop seconds. We'll throw this on my wrist, get a look. You see it has that wonderful 1960s diver straight bar interface with the lugs, and it wears quite well. Now, it's a 42 millimeter watch, but it's only about 50 millimeters across. So I can wear this, and I think if your wrist is 15 centimeters circumference, you're going to find it wears pretty well. This is about as thin as an Omega dive watch gets in 2022 or 2023. So I recommend this in place of something like a Ploprof or Planet Ocean if you want something to wear underneath a sleeve. A really cool piece and a well-received limited edition. Well, I should say it's limited by production time, not by number. So it's probably better to call that Omega James Bond 60th, a special edition. Now here's a model that was made from 2000 to 2011. This is the original version of the Royal Oak 15202. So you can see some of the characteristic features of the original 15202, including Arabic numerals outboard of the indices. We have the logo up at 12 o'clock. We have a slightly different shaped indices and hands. And then if you look very carefully, you can see on the original 15202, the dial color didn't match the date disc. The date disc here is a very light silver white where there's, there's a little bit of a darker a beige undertone to the dial itself. You can also see it has the prior clasp, single trigger release, uh, AP style logo, swing arm internally. But the real advantage of these earlier 15202s is that the winding rotor is so much better beautifully skeletonized, internally beveled with an AP logo, you could see that we have sharp interior angles. We have exterior points where bevels meet. We have at least three different types of finish on this movement. That's just the rotor. Then we get to the movement itself. Mirrored on Galage a mile wide. This is why I miss this old 2120 caliber that was retired two years ago for the 7121. The old JLC base here is more beautiful and in my opinion, more special. You can see solarization on the ratchet wheel as well as the crown wheel core, beveling, rounded, mirrored, and a mile wide, a free sprung gyromax style balance beating at a vintage 19,800 vibrations per hour, harking back to the JLC late 60s origins of this movement, and then the 40 hour power reserve energized by a beryllium ring rotor that moves all the way around. This is a full ring around the movement, and it's borne on four ruby rollers that prevent the ring and the mass from crashing into the bridges and the plates. So while the mass is on one side, the winding rotor does go all the way around 360 degrees of the movement. The watch, of course, immaculately hand finished, and in this case, very well preserved, minimally if ever refinished, and then if refinished, only professionally. It has all of the inherent artistry and metalwork for which the Royal Oak and Audemars Piguet are justly famous. Doing a quick loom shot, you can see no shortage. It's an easy watch to read in the dark. It's 39 millimeters. It's just over eight millimeters thick. So 39 by about 8.3 millimeters thick. A very easy watch to wear. A lady can usually pick this up and put it on. But just to be sure, you can see on my 16 centimeter circumference wrist how much clearance I've got on each side. And also, rest assured, it'll fit underneath any kind of a dress cup.
This descends directly from the 5402, the original Royal Oak Jumbo, and in a lot of ways, it is the closest living relative of that original 1972 Royal Oak. In addition to the elements, such as the gorgeously finished movement and rotor that are no longer available, the monoblock case construction of these old 15202s no longer available today. And in fact, the last few years of the 15202, it went to a three-piece case design that was cheaper to manufacture. The original 1972 Royal Oak and this 15202 ST have that construction with a monoblock case back. So it's two pieces, the case and the bezel. Beautifully executed, a real classic, and a sign of back when AP did things the right way. Not just a vestige of AP doing things the right way. The Royal Oak ultimately inspired every kind of integrated bracelet, integrated lug sports watch on the market. And in some regards, today's Octo Finissimo from Bulgari incorporates some of those design tropes. This one's not integrated with a bracelet, but you can see how the strap, including using a rose gold end link, has been integrated perfectly into the flow of the lugs. Now this is only 6.3 millimeters thick rose gold, 40 millimeters in diameter, but it's the new for 22 Bulgari Octo Finissimo Skeleton 8 Days, and it has an 8-day power reserve. Get a little bit closer you can see that we have small seconds between seven and eight we've got rose gold indices numerals we've got a skeletonized movement which is the bvl 199 sk8 eight days of power reserve manual wind you can see the barrel is open showing you the coiled mainspring and the drivetrain from the barrel all the way down to the escapement the balance in the escapement fully visible from the dial side impressive finishing the legacy of the royal oak visible here as well as the combination of creases curves polished and satinated facets really animates the octo finissimo case more than the versions that have monotonous media blasted or brushed cases having this contrast really helps out taking a look at the reverse you can see that the movement is broad it's only 2.5 millimeters thick, but it's over 36 millimeters in diameter, so it fills this case beautifully and perfectly. We have a sort of monotone aesthetic with silver wheels and then nickel anthracite bridges and plates. Super open, airy, gossamer, graceful, and a watch that's easy to wear. We'll throw it on my wrist, which is 16 centimeters in circumference. The watch is 40 millimeters in diameter, 46 millimeters from lug to lug. It sits nicely. A handsome, rare, and versatile watch it's the kind of piece that gives you flexibility. It can dress up, it can dress down, it can be casual, but if you find that there's an occasion where it's just not welcome or perhaps would stand out unduly, you can put it down for a week, pick it up, and with an eight-day power reserve, it is still going to be running. A real cool piece, brand new from Bulgari. Well, I don't want to call it brand new. It came out last August. Fairly new, we'll call it that. This was a 500-piece limited edition from 2020, the Blanc Pen 50 Fathoms Bathyscaphe Desert Edition. It's the Day Day Desert Edition. We have a lovely sand-colored, desert-inspired Fumé Fade dial with an applique track outboard for reading the minutes and seconds, applique indices inboard. There is plenty of luminescence. You can see that all three hands are lumes, so you know the watch is running in the dark. It's 300 meters water resistant. We have a luminescent pearl on the bezel, so you can line it up with the minute hand for an impromptu zero to 60 minute timing instrument. Bezel is a ceramic insert for scratch resistance. We have hybrid baton syringe style hands, an unusual quick set system where if you unwind the oversized guardless crown, you turn in one direction and you actually index both the day and the date. Turn in the opposite direction, and you index only the day. There is a hacking seconds function, and again, 300 meters water resistant. The Bathyscaphe, designed as a more overtly vintage watch, this is the reference 5000 core, so the 5000 is the standard Bathyscaphe, this is the 5052 day date, and all versions of the 5000 case have squared off lug ends, minimal beveling, and no crown guards. So whereas the 5015 is still the mainstream 50 Fathoms, this one's designed to be a little bit more vintage evocative. Flip it all over, we have the Caliber 1315 DD. By the way, this is one of the best looking movements in the world at any price. I love the spiral set nation across the bridges, the triple finished blackened gold rotor, the bevels, which are unfathomably, just impossibly 
broad and mirrored for something that's built in series. They are some of the finest I've seen this side of Romain Gautier and Laurent Ferrier. All screw heads blackened with chamfered slots and circumference, automatic winding, three mainspring barrels, and a five-day power reserve still outstanding for a diver. We have a free sprung balance adjusted in six positions, not the chronometer standard of five, free sprung for shock tolerance, and anti-magnetic with a silicon hairspring. We have this lovely desert sand sailcloth strap, rubber on the bottom, sailcloth on the top, almost indestructible. I've seen these Blanc Pan 50 Fathom sailcloth straps last for a full decade and more in service. Across the wrist, you can see it fits me. If your wrist is much smaller than mine, you're going to want to look for the reference 5008 50 Fathoms, which is just 40.3 millimeters. But if you can live with the 43 right here, you're going to find it's a superb watch. You have the timing bezel, you have the five-day power reserve, the water resistance, the luminescence, the practicality of a day and a date complication. There's just so much to like here. Now, if you want great value, you don't have to look too far. Gerard Perigo, along with Ulysse Nardin, last year bought back from the group ownership by the management of the two companies, Caring, a luxury group had owned the two of them for the better part of a decade, GP longer than UN, but the common thread between both brands was that Caring pretty much killed them both, uh, constricting their sales, research, development, and reach to the point that the ownership felt compelled to forcibly buy back the two companies and relaunch them in the burgeoning independent watchmaking sphere. So Gerard Perigo, once again independent, has cool back catalog watches like this 1966 Petite Seconde. This came out in 2010. It's 40 millimeters in rose gold. It has a baked Grand Faux enamel dial. And I don't know how well you can see this on the camera, but there's a slight rippling to the text of true enamel. It always has a little bit of a ripple across its surface and a little bit of an orange peel-like texture, whereas lacquer is perfectly flat. Well, to get this Grand Faux effect on a precious metal dial base, the artisan applies up to 20 applications of vitreous paint or glass-based paint, fires it at up to 800 degrees centigrade repeats again and again until it's lustrous, deep, glossy, gleaming. These don't oxidize, they don't tarnish, they don't respond to moisture, so they stay beautiful permanently. The hands are steel and fired to achieve the bluing. The lugs and the case, in fact, extravagantly handmade. The, this is a true welded lug handmade case, and you could see that the lug welded into a slot in the case flank, then cleaned and finished to remove all of the gathered metal from the weld to allow these super sharp breaks between lug and case and the watch is less than 45 millimeters lug to lug so though it's a 40 millimeter watch it wears remarkably compact it's also super flat as you can see easily sliding underneath the cuff and it's powered by Gerard Perigo's own movement which is beautifully made and visible on the back this is the 3300-050 it's automatic winding with the unidirectional winding action it's got a 46 hour power reserve a 4 hertz beat rate 32 pivot joules and a stop seconds or hacking function you can see that the bevels are a mile wide and beautiful Beautiful. There's engine turning all over the base plate. We have blued screws. We have engine turning on the bracing plate just below the rotor. You could see that we also have polished pin heads. These locating pins are used to help locate the bridges on the base plate. And the head of each of those locating pins, like a Calatrava or a Patek Philippe, the heads of the pins have been polished. The rotor is gorgeous, triple finished with a solarization outboard, lovely circular Cote de Genève, and then mirrored beveling on its edge. We also have linear Cote de Genève across these bridges. These are gorgeous movements from Gerard Perigo. A really special watch, and one which can, in my opinion, go head-to-head -head with any Calatrava, any Patrimony, any Longa 1815. This is a very special watch. Here's one that you'll scarcely ever see. This is the Hour here and hour there, the EC eight year. Taking a quick look, launched in 2014 by Von Cleef and Orpel. This is horologically fascinating from a brand best known for jewelry. We have two different time zones. We've got a jump hour system coupled with a retrograding date and a dual time capability. So I can set my reference time zone just like this. And you can see how I'm able to jump and retrograde at the same time. And, and to be clear, what you do is you set this, this is your reference time zone, and then the one down at six o'clock is your 
local time zone. I'm not going to call that 6 o'clock. That's more like 5 o'clock. So you've got this wonderful white dial with a sort of cross-hatched center. And then you've got a quick set system for your secondary time zone, a few splashes of blue, the retrograde scale, a lovely case with hinged Vendome style lugs, only 8.1 millimeters thick, 42 millimeters in diameter. You can see it is a beautiful white gold watch with a movement developed by Jean-Marc Viderecht of Agenor, who among other things has developed movements for Moser, for Panerai, for the Harry Winston Opus series, actually built an entire watch for the Harry Winston Opus series. Agenor also providing the Agen Graf chronograph caliber to many brands such as Singer Reimagined. This is a really cool take on Agenor's movement finish and decoration and engineering ethics. As you can see, the full balance bridge and the free sprung system with the micro adjustment screws, much like what you'll find on the Agen Graf. We also have here, let me show you so you don't miss it, a micro rotor automatic that mirrors the colors and the patterns of the dial side, 48 hour power reserve. And as you can see, everything is quite nicely decorated, engine turning, satination, black polished. There's mirrored on glage, which you can see well on the edges of the bridges. It's beautifully hand decorated. A very special watch it comes with an exquisite matching white gold pin buckle, throw it on the wrist and being super compact and super flat, you could wear this anytime. I happen to love retrogrades and jump hours and it's rare to find them on watches that aren't from Gerald Genta. So this is a very cool combination and a lot of fun to own and wear. And I finish up with a Galactico, possibly the most beautiful Debatoon Perpetual Calendar ever made. This is the DB15 Perpetual calendar in white gold. Very few DB15s were made. There were 93 of them, of which 45 were in white gold, and this particular dial and white gold case combination is killer. This was Debatoon's first ever perpetual calendar module, its first ever in-house caliber, and this is one of the earliest versions of that in-house caliber. The dial features a matte brown, and it's also matte on the center, where later Debatoon would use rosette guilloche almost exclusively. So this is a very unusual look. You can see the gilt-style rose gold printing. We we have the day, the month, a pointer date, a leap year phase indicator just below a spherical bimetallic moon phase. The moon phase only needs to be adjusted once every 1,112 years. It's one half blued steel, one half white palladium. The system is patented and so is the spherical display. You could see that we have lovely arcing leaf or foy style hands and it is a perpetual calendar so no need to reset the calendar until the year 2100. Flipping it over, this is a 43 millimeter white gold watch. You could see one of the earliest versions of Debatoon's first in-house caliber, the caliber 2000 you can also see that this movement, which came out in 2004, here is rendered in one of its earliest interpretations, as we don't have the triple parachute shock protection. Instead, we have an entirely black polished and beveled stainless steel balance bridge anchored by a screw on each side, and the very first version of the ever-evolving Debatoon balance wheel. Here, a tri-spoke in blued titanium with platinum masses outboard, Denis Flageolet, with 10 separate balance wheels over the years. He's the genius watchmaker behind Debatoon, he always upgrades and replaces these wheels when the older watches come back for service, unless you ask them not to. So remember, this is like a brass movement FP Journ. All of the parts represent discontinued traditions, and it's valuable because of its rarity and its pioneering status. So you want to keep everything the way it appears here when you send it back. Remember, retain the balance. You can also see an early version of the company's bimetallic that is two-piece, clamped flat hairspring that breathes like an overcoil while remaining flat like a flat hairspring. If you look at the Côte de Genève across the bridges, this was before Côte de Betune. Uh, you could see that they're narrow waves, but you can also see that the dark side of the gradient from light to dark, the dark side is always to the left, whereas later on, the Côte de Betune would mirror each side, where you would have the dark gradient facing outboard on each side, so it would look like a mirror. Here, the stripes were laid down the same way all the way 
across something they would later stop. I'm also going to opine that these early versions of the 2004 are the best finished. In terms of detailing, you've got things that would not be compromised later, but maybe not as emphasized. You could see at the edge of every bridge, especially these interior bevels over the drivetrain and the barrel bridge, they're spectacularly mirrored. You can also see this black polished bridge is mirrored on its top, but then it's beveled on its side. And we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight sharp interior angles where bevels meet, and that's rendered on stainless steel, not brass. You can see just how bright the beveling is on the edge of this barrel bridge. And then we have solarization both on the ratchet wheels and the barrels themselves. You can see that there is a little anchor for the terminal end of the drivetrain, and this little bridge has been satinated across its top, mirror beveled on its edges, and those bevels come to a sharp point junction. So sharp outward angles are just as special as inward angles, and this watch has both. A very special watch with a manual wind five-day power reserve and perpetual calendar capability. This is the definition of a collectible independent brand watch, a real milestone from Debatoon that shows their earliest days of manufacturer watchmaking, as well as early versions of innovations that would become germane to the brand. So if you love this, and by the way, I think this is the most beautiful perpetual calendar they have ever made, reach out to Team Also at thewatchbox.com for purchase and pricing details.